Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, many subscribers, uh, many people who've watched my videos online, told me about the ringside interview involving Carl Frotch and George Groves. The show is ringside. It's a United Kingdom show and uh, it's excellent. It's really top quality stuff. Um, I always learn a lot from the tips that I receive here online and I also learned a lot from this show. First, let's talk about it. Um, interesting spin on this upcoming fight, which I think is a big fight. I think it's a competitive fight. Just to understand on where I uh, stand in terms of age and talent and stuff like that. I don't think personally that young guys need to apologize for being great. Right? I think that, uh, you know, the sport obviously has a power structure and a hierarchy. More people are loyal to older fighters because older fighters have paid their dues and pay the bills for the sport, right? The fans flock to known commodities. Younger fighters are always told that they're not ready for the next opportunity, right? You always hear that a younger fighter hasn't earned his stripes, right? Um, there's always talk, and I believe it's a power card from the deck that older fighters play where the older fighter before a fight says hey you're not giving me enough respect right the idea is that the younger fighter is supposed to kiss his ring is supposed to talk about how his upcoming opponent is actually a superior fighter isn't that the game isn't that why guys say hey you're not respecting me enough right also, older fighters always want the younger fighter to know that they're going to pay for that disrespect. That somehow, because of the way the younger fighter carries himself, the younger fighter is going to be even more punished in the ring. As if the older fighter wasn't going to try as hard if the younger fighter was just more respectful in public before the fight. So we've seen a lot of spectacles, right? Um, you know, to me... Young guys really shouldn't concede a fight before it starts. Young guys really should enter the ring as Floyd Mayweather did in his first championship fight against Hinaro Hernandez, thinking that they're already the champion. For those who remember, Mayweather actually came in wearing the patch on his trunks that WBC champions wear, right? This was, of course, before... He won the championship in a fight against the championship, uh, against the champion, right? From where I sit, talk is cheap before fights, right? As Evander Holifield told Mike Tyson once at a press conference before their first fight, when Tyson was accusing him of being disrespectful, Holifield looked across the table and said, well, we're going to fight anyway, you know, so go ahead and show up and let's fight. You know, if you're going to punish me, you know, you'll have the opportunity, basically, right? Well, here, you know, going in, I feel that the world, of course, because of all of what Carl Frotch has done in the ring, is indebted to Carl Frotch, right? We love guys who have proven themselves in fight after fight. But that doesn't mean that Frotch has... George Groves' hand speed. That doesn't mean that Frotch has George Groves' foot speed. That doesn't mean that George Groves hasn't studied films of Carl Frotch and hasn't figured out how to beat Carl Frotch. Right? The, uh, you know, age really shouldn't matter. Especially not here where George Groves is actually not 18 or 19, he's actually 25 years old. And George Groves has actually fought 
other contenders, plural. Not one fight against James DeGale, but fights against James DeGale and others. Right? Hasn't George Groves already been in the ring with a former champion in Glenn Johnson? Right? Hasn't George Groves fought KG fighters? Right? Isn't George Groves, in fact, experienced on the world stage at 25? Right? The big arena shouldn't really throw George Groves because wasn't there a lot of big arena and big press coverage for his fight against James DeGale? So for me, the talk was cheap. I personally think that, you know, on fight night, what's going to matter more than the talk or respect or whatever the opinions are of the fighters, it's going to be their talents. Right? Who's bringing what in? The ring. Only a fool would enter the ring and get thrown off by the other guy's opinion of him. Keep in mind, both fighters should assume that the other fighter wants to beat them on fight night. So whatever Carl Froch is thinking, whatever George Groves is thinking, they're actually going to have to go out there and execute. Right? And they should execute whatever game plan is going to give them the best chance of winning. Now that said, for me, the best part of ringside, and it's a great show, it's great, but the best part is when they have a round table of four fighters, British fighters, Martin Murray, Darren Barker, Andy Lee, and Matthew Macklin. And they're asked who's going to win this fight. Now you need to understand that some of these guys, Darren Barker in particular, has sparred with both guys. Right? These are fighters around the weight class, right? They're, you know, 160, right? But they're close enough to the weight class where they've actually, you know, run into these guys. And um, the opinions are strident. It's really interesting. Right, Darren Barker says on the program that this is, let me quote him, too much, too soon. That's the quote for George Groves. He feels that Carl Franch is going to beat him, that George Groves is too green. I was also intrigued by Matthew Macklin's statement. He said that he likes, let me quote him, Frotch in a big way. Right? That's the quote. Those guys just don't see the fight as being competitive. Think about that. Right? They even have James DeGale on the show. He's not part of the round table with the other four guys, but they have an interview of him. And James DeGale says that while the fight may start competitively, he just doesn't see George Groves winning. Right? Think about it. And of course, DeGale has been in the ring with George Groves multiple times. Right? Well, all of that said, you know, in this corner of the internet, we will brazenly disagree with even experienced fighters like these guys. Martin Murray was part of the panel. He says, without much explanation, that he thinks Groves is going to beat Frotch. The person I agreed with the most, because he actually taught style. It's brief, but it's Andy Lee. Right? Andy Lee is actually picking Groves to win the fight. Andy Lee talks about things like head movement. He points out that George Groves is all wrong for Carl Frotch. I agree with him 100%. If George Groves fights the right fight using things like head movement, foot speed, distance, a jab, 
I think he has an excellent chance of winning this fight. I understand the casinos disagree. I understand big names. Barker, reigning middleweight champion. Matthew Macklin, disagree. Right, James DeGale disagrees. Fair enough. I think the world is tilted against George Groves because he's the young guy. Not that young, but he's the young guy compared to Carl Frotch. Right? I think that uh, people are overlooking the fact that Groves brings a lot of skills to the party. Well, where it really gets interesting is in the comments of the fighters. Now, you know... As I said earlier, I'm, I, I don't really care what guys say before a fight. I'm fascinated by post-fight interviews. When the fighter's actually talking about actual experience against the opponent. But pre-fight interviews, everyone thinks they're going to win. But I was a bit fascinated by George Groves' comment. I thought it was an eye-opener. When he talks about the fact that Carl Frotch has lost several fights. Then he has the audacity to name them. One of the fights is the Andre Durrell fight. He talks about how Durrell fought a negative fight on his back foot, right? Wasn't too brave, but yet beat Carl Frotch. But the comment that really opened my eyes, and it should open yours, is when Groves talks about looking at the Lucien Butte fight. Think about that fight. Isn't that one of Carl Frotch's best moments? And Groves actually says that immediately after that fight, he turned to his people and he said, you guys have got to make this fight. Him against Carl Frotch. In other words, he looked at the Butte fight. As I've said here earlier online, <laughs> you know, I thought Butte was going to win that fight, but he looked at the Butte fight and he saw enough in that fight to feel that Carl Frotch was beatable. And it's interesting, at the end of the video, at the end of the ringside show, they ask him, how's he going to beat Carl Frotch? Now keep in mind, the game is to be sold, not told. Right? If you're about to fight, if you're about to fight a guy, I believe you're foolish. You're hurting yourself if you give the blueprint on what you're going to do in the fight. What I thought was interesting here is that Groves <laughs> actually goes back to his earlier comments. And Groves says, I'm just going to follow one of the game plans of the guys who've already beaten Carl Frotch. He mentions Andre Ward. Right? I thought it was remarkable. What that tells me is that Groves, and by the way, he mentions how Andre pushes back Carl Frotch when they fought. Right? I think Groves is, how do I put it? A guy who has studied the fight, studied Carl Frotch's history, and who in his mind has a technical plan on exactly what he's going to do. And I'm just here to tell you folks that skill-wise, I have no doubt that he has the skills to pull it off. Right? My hesitation is just on whether he's going to get caught up in a shootout and actually abandon his plan. Right? I've seen him get caught up, I believe, against Frampton, against Sierra. Right? Um, I've seen George Groves lose it in past fights, right? I thought he traded too much with Glenn Johnson, quite frankly. But I believe he definitely has the skills to beat Carl Frotch, and I believe he has studied Carl Frotch more than Carl Frotch has studied him. When they ask Carl Frotch how he's going to beat Groves, Carl Frotch just says, well, look, you know, I'm going to land, you know, either a right hand or a left hook. Right? He believes that the fight only ends one way. George Groves by KO. Right? Think about it. Even Carl Frotch knows, in my opinion, that his best chance is a puncher's chance. Right? If George Groves comes in, as James DeGale believes he will, on his back foot with movement, 
George Grove should win many of the slow rounds, right? Um, I thought it was fascinating, you know, as to who got under whose skin. I do believe Carl Frotch is a little bit surprised by how Groves is firmly convinced that he's going to win from a technical standpoint. In other words, it'd be different if Groves is just a young guy talking about beating the old king. But Groves is different. Groves is the young guy talking about specific fights and specific strategies. That's very different. Right? Groves is literally the young student talking about having studied the master and having a blueprint on how to win. So to the gamblers out there, let me just say this clearly. George Groves is a live underdog. I thought he was a little full of himself when they asked about Adam Booth. He concedes Adam Booth is no longer in his corner. Then he goes further later in the show and says, if I had no one in my corner, I would still beat Carl Frotch. <laughs> I think Groves is getting a little bit full of himself, but what the comment implies is that he already has the blueprint on how to beat Carl Frotch. He doesn't need to hear it from another person. Right? Understand to me, that's the right mindset to have because whatever is said isn't going to give Carl Frotch extra hand speed. It's not going to give Carl Frotch extra movement. And people need to listen closely to Andy Lee's comments on the fight. But Andy Lee says that Carl Frotch has gotten a little older and has slipped a little. Right? Listen closely to Andy Lee. I think that's the very best part of the ringside show. I'm expecting a great fight. I think George Groves is a live underdog. I think he's mispriced by the casinos at something like 3-1 to one as an underdog. Right? I get that. Carl Frotch is much more experienced than George Groves. But isn't this the story of boxing? Eventually, the torch is passed to a new generation. Eventually, that experience advantage becomes an age disadvantage. Anyway, I totally recommend the uh, ringside interview between the two fighters. Right? George Groves is brash. He does rub people the wrong way. There are many in boxing, DeGale, Macklin, Darren Barker among them, who believe that this fight is a mismatch. I don't. I think Groves is a live underdog. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.